welcome to Ideas for Change this election. Will these elections of change finally bring about the much-needed economic hunger that India now awaits? Despite this recession, are we finally at the verge of changing things around and looking at this slowdown as an opportunity? We've got two aspects to remember. One is how India Inc. views this and what India Inc. hopes will be the reform by the new government. And the other side of it is what do large foreign investors think about India's demographic and democratic process this time around. All that is coming up with two special guests. Ajit Gulabchand from India Inc. site, Shashi Tharoor with a world view on Indian elections. Shashi Tharoor, thanks very much for joining us on Ideas for Change. How difficult are these elections proving to be? You mean uh, my elections in Kerala or you mean the elections over in general? I would say that it's, you know, a five-phase election is a huge challenge. First of all, because the, the way in which uh, the emphasis shifts both geographically and in terms of the kind of constituencies puts a real burden on the different political parties. And uh, you also have the fact that any unexpected developments intruding at various stages of time can influence the behavior of the voters. So it's a very difficult election. I think it's a difficult election for people to predict. At the same time, for someone like me who was in a sense fortunate to be in the first phase, I feel that uh, having gone in for that short and intense burst, uh, four weeks of really solid campaigning, 20 hours a day, and then to be able to sit back and watch the rest of the process, I do feel that uh, in some ways it's a bit of a relief. I feel sorry for those who are in the last phase. Do you get a feeling that development matters have actually taken center stage in these elections and that too is a big change for the way Indian polls are done? Well, actually, uh, I, I had come up with a very detailed program on development issues and I had a vision for Thiruvananthapuram articulated on the first day on my website and statements to the press and speeches and so on. But to my surprise, instead of debating those issues, my opponents chose to make me the issue. So I actually had uh, four weeks where I was essentially a, a lone voice talking about development problems, whereas for them apparently uh, it was more relevant to start digging up old articles of mine and trying to challenge and distort my views on various issues, uh, which were frankly irrelevant it seemed to me to the future of the country and to the issues of 2009. In Thiruvananthapuram, there are some very serious development issues. It's not just a, an urban capital, and the capital's own infrastructure needs serious work. But it's also got a coastal area, a village area, even a forested area, and some of the classic development problems of India, from drinking water shortages, school problems, bad roads, all of these are fundamentally there and need to be tackled. So the argument that the people needed an effective MP somebody who wasn't just someone who could stand up and make fancy speeches in Malayalam, but who could go to Delhi and work for them and make their voice and their needs heard in Delhi. That argument was what I think really clinched it. How worried are you about the disconnect between local issues and a national election? Is there a big disconnect out there? Well, look, I mean, the, the role of any MP is actually a dual role. On the one hand, he or she has to represent the voters of the particular constituency they're representing, and that means they have to fulfill the needs of that constituency. But on the other hand, they have to be a voice in the national parliament when national laws and policies are being framed and debated. And you must vote for people who can do both.